Did you never have a conversation with Phil about his Chicago years? Did you ever sit no. down with him? Never once. No, but uh, I'm kind of glad that things didn't go well there because, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, Kobe and I were still, you know, looking for looking for somebody to get us to that next level. So when uh, I found out he was uh, not having a good time, I, I went to Mr. West and Mr. Kupchak and be like, this is who we need. You got to get it done. You got to get it done. And they agreed and it worked. And he, because, you know, we were, you know, my thing is, if I'm with somebody that they've done it before, I can follow. If I'm with somebody that hasn't done it before, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, uh, you know, it's like doing a show with a guy that has an internet show versus a guy that has a network <laughs> show like you. You know what I mean? <laughs> do I do it with the guy that has a bunch of YouTube followers or do I do a show with the great Rich Eisen Thank who's you, been there a long, long time? Thank you. So, no, no disrespect to the other coaches, but I needed somebody that's going to get us over the hump. Because, look, we could, we could always make it to the Western Conference Finals, but, you know, we needed somebody in the timeout that says, this is what you got to do. Boom, 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 bam, bam, bam. And I knew Phil Jackson wants that guy. Once he came, everybody's confidence just rose to, you know, to the next level, including mine. So when Phil was having his issues towards the end of his Bulls stay, and you're sitting there in Los Angeles watching the Bulls do what they're doing and being torn apart, you were walking into Lakers brass and saying, let's go get him the minute he becomes available, is what you're yes. saying. Yes, that's exactly what happened. So what did he bring to the equation that that you needed when you finally got there? How, how did he handle you? How did he handle Kobe? How did that work for you? He brought, sure. he, he brought a resume. So if he says do this, we all know that he knows what he's talking about. Because every summer when we lose, we watch him in the finals. You know? So it's like when he drew up a play in a timeout, it ain't no, oh, uh, that's not going to work. Or, uh, no, we should do this. It was yes, sir, no, sir. So when uh, I first met him, he said, look, if you listen to me, you'll be MVP. You listen to me, you will win a championship. And I said, cool. <laughs> first thing he said, no more albums, limit your commercials, and do everything I say. And I agreed. And it was uh, probably the best year that I played. And, you know, once we had that formula of how to win, we were just thirsty for more. You know, because between me and you, I just wanted to get one so you guys would stop talking about me and all that stuff. But after we got one, then I watch your show, Rich, and you'd be like, oh, the Lakers <laughs> got one, but can they get two? So now I was like, okay, now that we got the formula, let's just, you know, let's just keep it going. And if it, if, listen, if it wasn't for him and Kobe and Big Shot Bob and, you know, B. Shaw and, you know, Rick Fox, I, was gone. I don't think we ever could have got three without Phil Jackson at the, at the wheel. Well, we probably could have, we, we probably could have squeezed off one, but three in a row, I don't think we could have done that without, you know, Phil, Phil Jackson. And the way Phil handled us, he left us alone. He let us figure it out as men. Like, he always knew, like, look, I'm going to stay off Kobe because Kobe is a vital, vital piece. You just you do what you you know, just let him do whatever he wants to do. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say something every time he makes a mistake. I'm gonna just let him go, because you know Kobe was a special one, and I saw how he uh, dealt with our rock. You know, watching watching in the show, you know the way he dealt dealt with Robin. So you just let Robin be Robin, but when he gets on the court and performs at a certain level, it's something that they needed. So Phil just left us alone. He let us figure it out as as men. And that was his thing. And that's why I always say if the general does not panic, the troops will not panic. So what did he say to Kobe then? If he told you no more no more uh, albums, cut down on the commercials, do you know what he told Kobe when he first walked in after his last dance with Chicago? Sure. No, Phil was very, Phil was very strategic. So he, uh, when he came in, he already knew everybody's personality. He gave us all books to read. So the book he gave me was a book about Frederick Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche was a guy that was so, so smart. He was a genius that people thought he was crazy. But that's a book he gave me to read. I don't know what book he gave other guys, but I know for a fact that 
you know, with a, a Kobe's motor, you just got to let them go. You don't want to, you don't want to tame them. And that probably was the best thing because, you know, without him going crazy, without me going crazy, like I always say, we probably could have squeezed off one championship, but in order to get three, you can't get three. But again, the best thing he did was he, he would let us figure it out as men. Like I remember in the Portland series, down 15, he didn't see him over there panicking and jump around. We came back from the time then. He's like, oh, you guys ready to play now? If you guys ain't ready to play, all right, you know, this year is wasted. This year going to be wasted. Let's go. Like, you don't call players and say, do this, do that. He just gave us that one statement. All right, you guys tired of messing around now? All right, let's go get it done. And we as men, we figured it out. B. Shaw came through in the clutch, hit some threes, Rick Fox. I finally got it gone. Kobe got it gone. The rest is history. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.